Hello, welcome back to the JLP Network YouTube channel. So on, on the last episode, we asked the question, what is the true gospel? All right, for example, we address this. The true gospel is the entire gospel. It is not the gospel in part, but it's the entire truth of the word of God. That includes his commandments. That includes the return of Jesus. That includes um, us knowing that we have to die to ourselves in order for us to be made alive in God. We have to die to ourselves in order God, for God himself to take pre precedent in our lives, to take the lead in our lives. You see, today we have access to the gospel, but we fail to implement it in our lives as the early church did. What do I mean by that? Well, today, because of technology, we can hear any sermon, we can read the Bible in any translation, in any language, which is very wonderful. But the thing that I've been studying in the word of God is that God himself, he doesn't want us to just merely read about his word he wants us to be to be made whole within his word he wants us to become one with his word this is completely out, out of topic but i want to just um explain this a lot further use this example for example you know many people they see that tattoos are very fashionable they see tattoos look very cool very intriguing right very interesting and tattoos helps them to um record a milestone right that they experience in life or a memory that they would they, they always want uh to um never forget okay cool and so what they go ahead and do they get a tattoo on their bodies right but the thing about it is y'all is like tattoos in a way you're able to get it tattooed in your body this writing or this image and you say you get it because you want to remember right you want to remember but the thing about it is guys god he does not want us to just write his word to remember it he wants us to live it out and so this is very important what i noticed is that in the early church they were very very much so really dedicated to make sure that they you know they they were committed to discipleship they were committed uh, to giving their brothers and sisters the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ but actually showing them step by step example by example of how to really live a safe life we understand that we cannot save ourselves but God has left us an example which is his son Jesus Christ and that example is mapped out in the Bible of what is right and what is wrong and what God really expects of us to do for example the the, the early church understood that the gospel is about action they knew that the gospel was not just about declarations today you hear a lot of people say um you know uh, i am a christian or you hear people say um i claim this blessing i claim that i claim for god to do this for me but we don't want to partner with god we don't want to take responsibility and to grow our spiritual muscles the early church they took responsibility to grow their spiritual muscles and they knew that um the great commission is not simply sharing the good news but is living the good news and encouraging others to do the same i want all of us to understand myself included is that the power of the gospel only manifests in our lives once it becomes our lives i don't know about you but a lot of us believe that we can in fact live our christian life like in a container and then we just go ahead and be about our business in other parts or other aspects of our lives. But what I noticed when it came to the early church is that there was no separation. Um, they brought their faith in every avenue in their lives. Every part of their lives was indeed dependent on their faith in Christ Jesus. Now, We've talked about how we have to uh, make the gospel our lives. We've talked about how we have to become one uh, with God's word. Okay. Now I want to address this, you know, you know, God himself, the truth of the gospel, y'all, God himself, he knows that ultimately he wants to make every human being made in the image of his son. He wants to transform every human being into the image of his son. Um, and, and God does this too. Um, with our participation now how do we participate in order for God to do this okay well 
Because God wants us to become made in the image of his son, this requires us as believers to become one with his word. And this is very, you know, important for us to understand. Jesus himself is the word in the flesh. You guys see where I'm going with this. Jesus himself is the word in the flesh. So pretty much the Bible in a sense is God. The Bible in a, in a sense, the written word is as well Jesus Christ. So the, the, the more that you study it, the more that you meditate on it, you are becoming more and more like Christ. You are being made more in the image of God. But God wants you to take it up a notch. He doesn't want you to just read the word of God. He wants you to apply it in your life. And I feel the disconnect today in our churches is that we have lack applying the word of God in our lives. We have been merely just preaching the word of God and, and recognizing that it is truth. But we have not allowed this truth to do the work in us. And we have not allowed ourselves to uphold this truth. Rather upholding the truth of the gospel, we have been upholding um, our opinions. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue here. I want to also um, share this with you guys. I don't know about you, but I feel like today we don't want anything to do with correction um, unless there's a blessing attached to it. And I feel it goes the same with the gospel of Christ. Many of us, when we go to church or when we go to hear a sermon, if that sermon does not have a blessing or if that sermon doesn't say something that resonates with us, we lose interest. We don't want to hear about it. But we have to understand, y'all, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not just about blessings. The main, the main overall purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ is about transforming your soul. I'm going to say this again. The overall purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ is about transforming your soul. And this is where we are today, y'all. We, the church, we do not want to hear the truth unless, again, a blessing is attached to it. Do you see the problem here? I'm going to take a pause for a second. I just want us to um, be on the same page. Do you see the problem here then? You see, the problem here is that the gospel we hear today is about blessings and not about Christ himself. I want us to understand to answer the question, right, what is the true gospel? Well, the true gospel is about Christ and what he wants for you. It is not about you and what you want from Christ. I'm going to say this again. The true gospel is about Christ and what he wants for you. It is not about you and what you want from Christ. And the enemy, y'all, the enemy, he enjoys it. He enjoys it when we desire the blessings more than Christ himself. Why? He knows that the blessings, again, can't save you. He understands um, the more that you desire um, to be all about you, you become dis disconnected to God. And this is where the danger hits us, right? When we're disconnected to God, the enemy is able to do whatever. Because it's when we remain in him, y'all. When we remain in Christ, we have protection, we have security. I want to read this to you, and this is very important. Um, and it really goes hand in hand with what we've been discussing so far. And um, it's, it's a scripture that sadly, many, many, many um, preachers and ministers do not address. And this is very important because this is Jesus' word himself. He's the one that is speaking. Um, and it comes from Matthew 7, verse 23. I'll go ahead and read a portion of it for this time being. And it's, it's one that I really um, talk about a lot on the podcast. Because on the podcast, I'm very much very outspoken about making sure that our motives are pure before the Lord. Our intents are pure before the Lord. Because I know at the end of the day, um, God cares about your motives. It's not just about, you know... Uh, living, you know, uh, how can I say this? It's not just about you doing things for for the benefit of the kingdom, but it's where is your heart in your doing? Uh, are you just doing things to do them, but are your, is your heart really full of the love of God and you want to do this um, because you, you, you love God? Or you just want to do this, you know, for attention, right? Or for um, people's applauses and approval. And so Jesus says in Matthew 7, verse 23, he says, he says, um, Pretty much, he's speaking to people, I would say, 
for example, who began to embrace blessings more than him. But in a way, they were deceived. They did not, you know, pay attention and realize that they were straying from Jesus. The whole time they were doing kingdom work and they're like, oh, we're serving the Lord. You see, we're prophesying in the name of the Father and the name uh, of the Son, right? Oh, or we, we're, we're feeding the poor, we're giving to the homeless. And here in Matthew 7, verse 23, Jesus says to, the, to those people, he says, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. And one thing that fascinates me about this particular scripture is that Jesus did not say this to non-believers. He did not say this to someone who was an atheist who never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said this to someone who knew truth. But the thing is, these individuals, perhaps, you know, the reason why the Lord used this um, for our for our benefit, right, to warn us, is that their heart was not for the Lord. Yes, they were doing the work of the kingdom, but their heart was not towards God. They began to have a, a love for the blessings, a love uh, for the recognition, a love for the world, a love for the ways of the world. And that is dangerous, y'all. And we have to make sure as believers that every day we are constantly um, talking to God and making sure that we are right with him and making sure our motives are pure before him. And um, as we learned from the previous episode, right, the true gospel, again, is about action. Uh, it's not about just taking action as we talked about recently, but it's about your motives. Where are your motives? Are your motives pure? Are they holy? Are they godly? Um, and it's not enough um, for us to just caress the reality of the truth um, and, and doing it, but God wants us to make sure that we are a people of action. We're not busybodies. It is not for us to just speak about being saved, but we need to live a life that says, man, I am saved and I'm so saved um, by the grace of God. I know if I were to die today, where I would be and where I would go. So in a nutshell, the gospel, the true gospel is not just the people that are preaching um, the gospel, but it's, some, it's a people, right? A group of people that are firmly rooted in the gospel itself. The one who depends on the gospel, like their life, depend on it. So after Jesus said um, that previous statement, which came from Matthew 7, verse 23, he continued in the following verses, and I'm going go to go ahead and read it to y'all. Um, and it's Matthew 7, verse 24 to 26. He says, um, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to repeat it again. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. First of all, I want you to pay attention to that key term practice. So Jesus himself there in verse 24 in chapter 7 of Matthew, he's already letting us know. It's not about us just merely just preaching the word or speaking the word or declaring the word, but he wants us to practice the word. And the reason why he wants us to practice the word is because he knows that it is his word that is going to transform us into his image. And it's because, again, he is the word. He is also the written word of God. Um, and then he continues on saying in verse 25, he says, The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. Verse 26, he says, But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Like Jesus straight up said, You're foolish if you do not practice my word. It's not enough for you to just read my word, but you have to practice it. If you practice my word, if you live according to my word, then you are wise. If you do not practice my word and you're just saying it and you're just sharing it on social media or you're just saying, you know, you know, y'all, he's saying you're foolish. And that goes for all of us. Okay. And so <laughs> uh, as we're talking about this particular scripture, uh, this saying came to mind and it's been been on and on on social media is very popular it's a popular saying right now and it's the saying where um people are saying you know don't try me try jesus i'm not gonna lie it's kind of funny but at the same time let us not take it literally because honestly 
<laughs> it's best that you try anybody but Jesus. Y'all, Jesus was kind, but Jesus was very serious about his father's business. Jesus was not playing around in these scriptures like we could see, the scriptures that we just recently read. Um, and it's important for us to not be one of the ones that Jesus said, get away from me, you evildoers, I never knew you. So what does this imply then? What does this imply? Jesus is saying to us, we have to practice his word. It's saying that again, the true gospel is about action, y'all. It's not enough nowadays to just quote scripture. It's not enough nowadays to just share it on social media. It's not enough nowadays to be very eloquent and very intelligent in the ways that we formulate sermons. Jesus wants us to practice scripture. He wants us to practice scripture in order for us to become one with scripture because that is how we are transformed into his image. All right. And the reason being too as well, y'all, is because Jesus, again, he cares about the heart. And he knows that if your heart is pure, everything else that you do will be pure. Everything that you do also will be holy. Okay? Jesus, y'all, he wants us to be about his word. He wants us to put his word into practice because he wants you to live a life of purpose. He wants you to live a life with pure intentions. He doesn't want you to just be chasing after money, after fame, but he wants you to know the true meaning of life. And he wants you to know a life apart from him is not life at all. And Jesus now, I strongly believe he is coming back. And it's written in scripture. And we have to make sure that this is the message of the gospel. Like never before, we need to uphold, we need to confess, and we need to spread like a wildfire. Because many people, they feel as if this is all a parody. They feel as if this is all fake, make-believe. This is mythology. No. This is reality. Jesus is coming soon. And he is coming for his church of people who were truthful towards him until the end, faithful towards him until the end. Yes, scripture tells us that God, his faithfulness surpasses the skies. But you have to understand as well, the same Jesus said, the one who has faith until the end will be saved. So Jesus is coming back, y'all. And he wants us to not just love, but he wants us to take action. You see, Jesus is not coming for, much for a church that only pro proclaim love. He's coming for a church that, fulfill, that fulfilled the Great Commission. He's coming for a church that kept his Father's commandments. He's coming for a church that lived according to his example. He's coming for a church that practiced his word. He's coming for a church that was not ashamed to proclaim his truth in front of the masses, even if that meant they were they were they were going they were going to excuse me um be persecuted that's the church that jesus is coming for and we have to realize that the true gospel y'all is not merely us accepting jesus and that's where we get stuck you know a lot of people say oh you know um all you need to do is accept jesus accept jesus and you're all right, and you're all right but what is to accept him if you're not living um, for him what is it like, what does it mean to accept Jesus if you're not allowing him um, to be the Lord of your life? We have embraced him as Savior, but this is the hour that God is wanting us to embrace him as Lord. In today's world, we don't want, we don't want to live according to the standards of God. We are tempted to live according to the standards of society, the standards of entertainment. Shoot, we, we even want to live according to our standards. But God, you have to understand, when it comes to his gospel, his gospel has come also with condition. The free package is this. The gift of salvation is free. Jesus paid the cost on the cross, right, for your sins. He forgave your sins. He died in your place. But you have to understand, Moving forward, there is a condition that the Lord has given us. And that condition is he wants us to deny ourselves. He wants us to die to ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. We have to follow him, y'all, in order for us to make sure that our salvation is fixed. And I'm going to go deeper in that so we can have a better understanding. What does it mean? You know. And so, again, we explained that. Only Christ himself has given us the title son and daughter of God. 
Um, a lot of people, you know, they think that everybody, like every human being is a child of God. Um, no. God created everyone, yeah. And because God created us with his own hands, he loved us. He loved the work of his hand. But we have to bear in mind that after the fall, God only wanted to be exclusive, right? To be exclusive with those of us who have decided to choose his son, Jesus Christ. God wanted to be exclusively in love with the people who loved and embraced and lived for his son, who chose to live for his son. What am I saying? I'm saying this, y'all. Jesus is the one that has given us the privilege to be children of God. If you're not in Christ, you are not a child of God. But I would love for you to become a child of God. And God, more than any of us, he wants you to become his child. In order for us to become a child of God, we must follow his son, who is Jesus Christ. And what does it mean to follow his son? Well, it means that we have to walk like him, talk like him, act like him. I'm not sure exactly what his, what his dress code was, but um, pretty much back in that time, they wore robes. He wants us to dress like him. What does that mean? He wants us to dress modestly. He wants us to dress um, in a way that it, it honors the Lord. It honors God. You know, he wants you to dress in a way where if God was physically present in the room, you would not be ashamed. But you would say, my father is present in the room and I want to be my best, right? I want to make sure that the way that I'm presented, um, it pleases my father because he is holy. You see, like many of us, the body of Christ, we believe God does not require anything um, from us but our faith in him. Um, you know, we know that salvation is um, personal. We know that salvation is free. We know that Jesus himself is the one that has given us the gift of salvation. And then we stop there. And the danger of this is that many people, they, they accept Jesus, but then what happens, there's a blockage. They're not, they're not experiencing radical transformation in Christ Jesus. Um, and the reason being is that we do not want to follow in the steps of Christ. We do not want to follow an ex example. Um, like we shared, you know, you hear sayings like, don't try me, try Jesus. But at the end of the day, God wants us to exemplify Jesus in every way. He wants us to exemplify Jesus in our action, in our words, in our, um, our attitude. If we don't, if we don't do this, y'all, like if we don't have any actions that align with our faith in God, that shows us that we are believers in Christ, to Jesus is as if we had no faith at all. Like, for example, remember, it was not simply because Abraham believed in God that he became the father of many nations, but it's because his belief led him to act. To do what? God himself said to Abraham, you know, I want you to sacrifice Isaac, your only son. Right. And we see this is showing a foreshadowing of Jesus, you know, um, ending up dying in our place. Right. For our sins. And so Abraham believed God so much that it moved him to act, meaning it moved him to take an action to the point where he already fully committed to kill um, to kill Isaac. If it wasn't for that angel of the Lord, y'all, Abraham would have killed Isaac. But then the angel of the Lord intervened, and that's what caused Abraham not to sacrifice Isaac. And that is what God is waiting for us to do. God is waiting for us to be a body of Christ, right? To be a church that does not stop simply like in phase A, right? Meaning that we believe in Christ. But he wants our belief in Christ to lead us to take action. What action? He wants us to walk in the ways of God, in the ways of his son. He wants us to uphold the great commission, uphold his word, even if that means we, we're gonna get hated by the world, like the Bible says, um, they hate us because they didn't know him. Um, even if that means suffering is gonna come. Um, but we could take heart, we could take courage, like the Bible puts it, because Christ overcame the world. And this, this y'all, this world is only temporal, temporary. It's temporal, right? Um, it doesn't last forever. Um, but what does last forever is whatever you do in God is your obedience to God.
and I understand the way that the world is is like it's in reverse you know it's like we feel like believing in Jesus sometimes right causes you to wait longer for certain breakthroughs for certain promises to manifest and you see people are out there in the world acting like a you know acting crazy and all that and it seems like things are happening for them but even God himself and his word, he shows us that, yes, you know, they're, they're having their good time. But that is just a temporary time. Eternity is forever. And so you can take courage that if you are indeed are, are living a, a fully devoted life to Christ, that um, Jesus himself, he has the room that he prepared for you. And Jesus himself, he has things that will definitely blow your mind because of your full entire um, devotion to him. All right, so we understand that God wants us to be a people of action. We understand that the gospel itself is not just about believing, but taking action. It's not just about us believing in the actual word of God, but it's about us becoming one um, with the word of God. Now, from that being said, it leads me to this question. Are we true followers of Christ? Um, Man, that's that's really an interesting question for me even in this season. Like, am I a true father of Christ? Um, we're going to tackle this and um, we're going to understand as well if we are indeed doing what God called us to do. Like, for example, we use the uh, uh, example of Abraham. You know, Abraham went so far that he allowed his belief in God to lead him to act. And so that is very important, you know, for us to ask ourselves, am I, am I doing what God told me or am I just holding what God told me? Am I doing something with the word of God? Am I, am I, uh, am I moving with the word of God to be able to see it become active, to be able to see it manifest in my life? Or am I just harboring the word of God in my heart and keeping it idle, keeping it powerless, you know? Um, if we think about it, it's only when we apply the word of God in our life that we see his power manifest. And so what about us? Again, I say, are we true followers of Christ Jesus? We're going to go ahead and answer that in the next episode. Thank you. Until next time.